Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is now got the title Blue Day Seaside. And what you see me doing right now is rubbing down an initial blue glaze that was way back in like January. And then someone came in the studio and I was like, I never got back to it. But I think I wanted you to see the painting as it was before that initial blue blue glaze. It had some nice things going for it, but overall it was just kind of a blah, steely effect. And I've been looking at that painting sitting on my uh, drawing rack for <laughs> four or five months now. Finally, I grabbed it uh, yesterday, and. I went to town with some extreme glazing. Now this is Thalo Blue I'm rubbing on right now, and uh, I believe Thalo Blue is. Uh, I'm not. I'm not glazing with any other color at this point. Um, in that previous little bit you saw from you know four months in the past, I rubbed a little black on there as well. But and all that was far more subtle. This was quite a heavy coat and. This is really a good idea um, if you know you think a painting's got some good composition, but it's kind of blah, it's kind of boring, and you want to jazz it up. Um, basically, what you're doing here is you're creating a problem. Now we have a bit of a problem. We have a, a painting that's been turned into this kind of tealy blue, and it won't stay that way. Um, and from there, I really, you know, it's not often I get into these uh, redos slash extreme glazing uh, modes. It's been, it's been over a year, uh, and there's not a lot of stuff sitting in my studio that I felt needs that uh, either. Um, for the most part, when I sit out to do a painting, I have a good idea as far as the colors I'm going to do and things. But I, I, I have to say, I'm so pleased with the end result of this, and I think you really enjoy. Um, this is, of course, a 15-minute version. We have the um, the full version is about an hour and uh, eight minutes, and um, that's in the members area uh, where you can hear me basically talk uh, while I'm doing it and discussing in greater depth the sort of things I'm doing. But I'm giving you a bit of a blow-by-blow blow now. So everything's sort of pivoting off phalo at this point. And if you do the extreme glazing, I did bring in some cobalt too, like that other blue you see there underneath the darker shapes at the top. I think that's a bit of cobalt. But um, the differences between the two aren't that great. I, I don't even know if I need, you know, it's necessary to have both on your palette. They They both have their their uh, uses of course and um, uh, but I can get by with almost just Thalo these days and uh, it's so much cheaper and it's very strong as well yeah anyway I am digressing as I digress as usual um, so every color that I'm adding is pivoting off of the Thalo in some way or has maybe a little bit of Thalo in it um, this you can see is basically white and it's usually some of this that's actually been adulterated with a little bit of um, raw sienna and, and don't think well that doesn't make any sense you you see when you bring the raw sienna into your blue mixtures how it introduces a bit of naturalism to the proceedings not that not that this image or painting has a, a natural feel at this point it's it's actually pretty striking and fairly strong um, you know it's basically shouting not yet but it will be at the end it's shouting I'm blue I'm blue um, I did and I was thinking at this point like I was really you can see all the green um, in the water below I was thinking well I kind of like that green I might try and keep it and I was going back and forth as I was painting the other elements now well this is interesting because what am I going to do to break it up well, a little bit of violet. So I brought in some dioxine purple, and I will do that a lot of times in my um, when I'm doing my blue riff, and because um, it's right next door, it's right next door to the blues. So it's going to be very, um, it's not complementary in the sense of you know orange being complementary to blue and canceling it out. The, that language they chose for the uh, 
um, the division of colors is quite interesting it complements it okay it goes with it it's uh, analogous I guess would be a good uh, word I, I didn't go to school and I didn't get known in their, their book learning so um, a lot of this stuff I've picked up just uh, in the laboratory of my studio um, but you can see that purple really is pretty with all the other colors and it's not setting up anything jarring which is really what we want we don't want to go jarring um, so if you're looking at the color wheel you got blue you have green on one side and uh, you'll have uh, violet on the other right uh, and we're not going anywhere near the yellows the oranges or the reds in this painting not even close really because all of those purples are very cool and they're leaning over towards that side um, but this went really well and I, I, it'd be great if uh, every painting that I put back on the easel went really well um, I know when I start slapping down um, a bucket full of phthalo on something that uh, I'm, I'm opening myself up for whatever is going to happen and um, but that's exciting and that's good to do sometimes and uh, uh, just so you know I mean the clouds changed a bit but it's not like I had any reference either I basically just kind of lean on uh, taking the sky whatever direction the sky is going to go uh, you know naturally right um, and this is a byproduct of you know painting a lot of skies so as I'm getting down one thing I like to do is I like to pop in a bit of a lighter tone up against you know any mountains or trees or whatever and that's what I'm doing here and of course the sky should always get a bit lighter as it moves down towards the horizon there are times when uh, I don't put the very lightest bit of the sky at the very bottom of the horizon um, in fact it's not often that I do I, I prefer to tuck it say somewhere in the middle of the bottom you know like where you say I put it here and uh, so just bringing in successive amounts of white and stuff and then a lot of times to seal the deal I don't think I need to do it on this one but um, if I do a, a complete reset of a painting with glazes like this um, a lot of times it's not a bad idea to hit it with a light glaze after everything's dry just to kind of seal the deal but you got to keep in mind with the glazing that um, even if you're just doing light glazing um, it has a way of cutting the light that is bouncing off your painting in a very significant way and this is why works that are glazed always appear much darker than works that are not um, even if you were to maybe just you know um, cut out a snatch of a color here or there hold on one second leave them alone sorry about that it's Jerry thinking about messing with the cat what you get you in trouble buddy we don't want that we don't want that anyway sorry about that we've lost most of the uh, disinterested people although you know I know when I talk about color it keeps people going anyway so I've been debating I like the green on the bottom I was thinking well maybe I'd go all into just solid blues um, but I decided to do the green thing and though that's a point I was going to bring up so I rub this down with Thalo Blue and you go well gee it's really really green and that's because Thalo Blue has a real resonance with the green tone I'd be willing to bet you that Thalo Green was invented first and then they adulterated that mixture to make the Thalo Blue because Thalo Blue has this green resonance very strong um, so you can see that's what I'm doing as I'm grabbing a little bit of uh, phthalo green yeah sorry about that lady at the door delivering a little package yeah so no I did I I was thinking mm, maybe the green won't work with all the pretty blues and purples in the sky and I thought yeah of course it'll work it's kind of working now um, so I brought phthalo into phthalo green into the phthalo blue mixture uh, with some white and some other things and I'm basically now there you know there was a lot of cool stuff in the initial painting a lot of neat little brushwork but I felt like 
that whole bit like where I'm painting now was like super busy too busy um, and that I wanted to simplify things and lead the eye more to just the waves um, now uh, I guess a word on waves I'm not a wave painting expert I have my ideas about painting waves and I've probably said this in every video where I painted waves um, but I enjoy them and um, there are people that are so good at it I mean you could you could make that uh, you know just an area of study on its own painting waves and 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 there are painters that have done that and uh so I always think about that when I'm painting waves it's it's not the same though as like I'm not painting a car or something like that um it's still nature so I feel like it's within my purview it's within my um domain of things that I'll go after and uh, so a lot of times too like when I'm doing this um, I might really like a color that is the glaze color but you can't really leave it that way because I have a different feel than the um, paint going over the top um, so I'll mix a color very similar that has some opacity and that's what you see me doing on these waves and this is not as light as those waves are going to go it's kind of just a pre um, you know something to set the, the white on top of and that's something I do all the time. I don't just do it with uh, light colors. I'll do it with very dark colors as well. Um, as opposed to, because you want to have a little bit of a transition edge. There's a lot of ways to get good edges. Um, but certainly one of the best ways is to have this sort of intermediate tone. And then you can plunk, you know, your lightest tones right on top of that. And you don't have to worry about um, how they're interacting with a much darker uh, thing that they're overlapping and that's a great oh, that's a great tip it's a great tip for you if you got into minute 12 of this video you are uh, receiving good tips um, and now of course we're building up the white waves and got some pow got some pop and um, you know I'm I I uh, oh, yeah there's a little bit of a place where I kind of messed up and I cleaned that up with a bit of a q-tip swab we don't call them Q-tips in New Zealand. They, we call them Q-tips in the United States because that's where I'm from originally. But out here they just call them a swab. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think uh, you hopefully got some ideas and some inspiration from this. The colors used, uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green, dioxine purple, uh, lamp black, titanium white and a little tiny bit of raw umber yeah and that raw umber just to knock a bit of that blue back up in the sky um, very handy for that um, and you can see whoa saleable painting very awesome and you know we took something that's kind of blah it was it was competent it might have found a buyer it might have found a buyer um, it was certainly not a, a bad painting but it was just missing a bit of a payoff and that's something I, I tend to try and think about is like well where's the payoff for people you know is that we're gonna have some stimulating color or there it's color and contrast that's where you're gonna get payoff composition is really not so much a payoff element as um, if it's wrong it's wrong and your painting is not is, is gonna be terrible um, but you know we had a strong composition on this painting uh, from the word and we we reinforced it with those dark uh, shapes at the top for sure yeah and I'm really happy with the way this turned out and hopefully you enjoyed watching me do it the extreme glazing <coughs> 101 try to one of your failures yeah or just try it in a painting it's just blah maybe it's not even an outright failure oh but definitely try it in a bad painting because you, you got nothing to lose you know you can just slap a bunch of phthalo on there and, and then and then save yourself and and see what what happens worst case scenario you can just throw the whole thing away anyway until i come back with another video thank you so much for joining me today and uh, what i'd like you to do until i do come back with another video would be to do me the um sincere favor of uh staying out of trouble and taking good care of yourself and your family and your loved ones